often asked what my favourite place to go to in the northeast of England is, and without a doubt it is Beamish Living Museum, located in Stanley, County Durham. I luckily only live a 12 minute drive away, so I've spent many school trips, summer holidays and days out here, so I'm often quite surprised by the amount of people that travel to the northeast, especially to visit Beamish. There were two queues, one for pre-booked tickets, and one for those who needed to buy tickets. My ticket is a pre-booked one, so luckily I was able to go into the shorter queue. I'd highly recommend pre-booking online before going, as I don't think I've seen a queue that long at Beamish since I was a child and they had the proper ticket booths. My face just says it all, as it's usually so quiet, but it was only a 10 minute wait, as I only needed my ticket scanned. Once out into the lovely fresh Beamish air, it was time to explore. If you haven't been to Beamish before, the museum is set on a bit of a loop where you can walk or catch the various vintage transport to the different era locations. The nearest era location to the entrance is the 1900s Pit Village, which is a bit of a personal favourite of mine. I wanted to have a look here a little later on, as on Mondays and Tuesdays, the steam locomotive number 1219 Caledonia Works gives a demonstration until mid-August. I started to walk to the right, following the path down to the 1900s town, which takes about 10 minutes or so to walk from the entrance. I've got a bit of a funny memory about this path. On Stir Up Sunday in November last year, I was able to get into Beamish five minutes early. So to take advantage of this, I literally ran from here all the way to the 1900s town, just so I could film the Christmas lights with no one around. Morning, I thought I'd take you around some of my favourite spots in Beamish this morning. I thought it was going to be really nice and quiet. But actually it's the start of the summer holidays and I think it's going to be so busy so I'm trying to whiz, completely whiz around today and show you everything that I like about Beamish. You know you're nearly at the 1900s town when you start to see these buildings. I think these are the new 1950s aged miners houses that are being built in the 1950s area. past the 1950s welfare hall to our left. I've only been here once or twice but it's very Carl the Midwife in style and has some incredible history about the story of the NHS and baby clinics. As it was super busy today I knew I wouldn't be able to see everything so I'd love to know if you'd like to see more videos on the different areas around Beamish. I love the 1950s Front Street and I recently made a video on the new council houses in this location so I'll definitely link it in the description if you fancy a peek. And now we're finally in the 1900s town. If I had to pick a favourite bit of Beamish, I'd have to pick the 1900s town, which explores how families lived and worked in the years leading up to the First World War. Each of the buildings are preserved as they would have looked, taking you back in time to a slow place of life. On this corner we have W Smith's Chemist, GR and D Edit Photographers and Heron's Bakery. Within Heron's Bakery you can see the bakers at work, creating delicious freshly made bread, pies, biscuits and cakes to traditional Edwardian recipes. The queue can be quite long, just like the majority of food places at Beamish, but there's so much to look at whilst you wait. The superhuman kneader was a lifesaver to create perfect dough in even half the time. 
I love how the bakery is set out. You actually get to see the beginning processes of baking and then you can see the equipment that was used before seeing the counter and the produce available to buy, which was made here in the bakery. On the menu today were rock cakes, tea loaves, alongside a range of jam tarts and cut cakes. Everything smelled absolutely delicious. I opted for raspberry and chocolate marble cakes in the end. I ate my slice at home and it was very homely and yummy. I don't think a trip to Beamish is complete without a trip to Jubilee Confectioners, the 1900 sweet shop. I love a good look at the fabulous displays in the window whilst in the queue and it looks like the star of the show today was Sarsaparilla. From black bullets, cinder toffee to licorice torpedoes, there are so many treats to choose from and I love the sound of the sweets hitting the scales. It's so nostalgic. got the goods. I always get a bit flunks when picking my sweets as I hear taking up time, especially when the sweet I've decided on in the queue isn't available. Stalls are filled with era appropriate goodies and you can even taste history in the bakery. This quite forbidden building is Barclays Bank, showing how banks in the Edwardian period dealt with pound, shillings and pence 
and you can even go down into the cellar to see the safes and the strong rooms. Let's have a look inside. We can see the counters to our left where people would have withdrawn and deposited money and these stairs may have led to the bank manager's offices. It's crazy to think so many people would have worked in the banks during the Edwardian period. You may have needed to go to this manager's office if you wanted a loan. If you go down these stairs at the back of the bank, you can see where the safes would have been kept for the storing of money and safe deposits. The workers at the bank would be constantly up and down the stairs here, keeping people's valuables safe in exchange for a fee. Behind these bars you can see all the deposit boxes and ledgers. With what looks to be scales and bags of gold and silver in this compartment. Across the road from the bank is the Beamish Mortar and Cycle Works, exploring the nature of the early mortar trade. Did you know that in 1913, only 1 in 232 people owned a car? A showroom to the front shows all sorts of memorabilia, from the lamps that would have lit these early cars to original enamel signs and motorcycles. Towards the rear of this building is a garage works with original tools and some vintage transport. And fun fact, this garage was featured in Downton Abbey. I didn't get a proper look in here unfortunately as it was super busy, but I'll show you next time. Across the road is the immigration office and printers. I filmed in there on my last trip to Beamish and I remember when it was green and was the Sunderland Echo building. You can also see the queues building again for the sweet shop. We next go into the Anfield Plain Industrial Cooperative Store, which is a replica of the building from Anfield Plain in County Durham. The Anfield Plain Cooperative Society was established in 1870, stocking products from the Cooperative Wholesale Society. The cooperative movement advocated for quality goods at reasonable prices and raised awareness of correct weights, measures and purity of products. The store is split into three sections, grocery, drapery and hardware, allowing people to experience what it was like to shop in the 1900s. We're in the grocer's shop currently, with the coloured packets on the shelves being used to differentiate products as many people were still illiterate at this time in history. As you can see from the shelves, much of the products are in the core packaging, with only a few recognisable brands starting to pop up in the shop that we know today. On top of this counter is a display case holding tobacco products, and also some iconic brands on this section of shelf. I really didn't think Bistro was so old, but then again, you always need decent gravy throughout history. Next, we 
next door is the drapery, full of beautiful items to make clothes. Ready to wear clothing was often for the elite, so materials were purchased to create a new garment or refashion an old item into something new. All manner of things are displayed here, from fancy trims, crochet threads to decorative hat pins. A treasure trove for an Edwardian lady. This shop features the operational cash carrier system of the Lamsom cash ball design, which was essential to the co-op style of business. Each family was given a dividend number, with the profits being shared between customers and it could have been as much as 20%. The last shop within the Anfield Plain Industrial Co-op store sells everything that you could possibly want or need connecting to hardware. It truly feels like walking back in time to go into this shop. Mangles and post tubs are positioned everywhere and there are even bristle brushes hanging from the ceiling. No scrub daddies and minky cloths in here. I love the sheer variety of soaps on the shelves, from the classic unbranded carbolic that could be used to clean your house as well as yourself if you were poor, to the new brands like Sunlight, Lifebuoy and Lux that were appearing on the market. This shop was a particular favourite of mine, you could spend all day peering at the shelves to see if you recognised the items and how they'd be used today. While some of the items are quite Victorian, it's interesting to see the tins of polish and the pre-cut soaps that were starting to make the housewife's jobs a little bit easier. All the pots and pans and watering cans are hung up on the ceiling near the lamps and cash carrier that encircles all three shops. I'd love to know what these metal things are that are hung up. I'm thinking possibly ice skates for the bottom of shoes. It's amazing how our modern shops have originated from places like the cooperative, with more standard pricing and set departments. Although I do wish shops now had a more quirky feel like this, and there's so much choice too. After a wee bit of Edwardian shopping, it was now time to get down to earth with nature at the livery and bait stables. Whilst going through to the stables, I saw this poster for Beamish's allotment garden and craft show on the 26th, 27th and 28th of August. It might be a canny event for anyone crafty or with green fingers. County Durham was still quite rural in the Edwardian period with animals being in close proximity of the town, so stables were quite a common sight for carrying goods. The carriages stored in these buildings would have been crammed with goods, or could have been hired with or without coachmen, horses and harnesses. This building looks to have been a workshop for any carriages that needed new wheels or components because you don't really want your carriage to drop to bits on the way to sending out a delivery. It was now time to pop into the bait stables. The bait stables are where the horses would have ate and slept, using the word bait that us northeast people called food. Compartments separate the horses, with hair being laid out for their beds, as well as their food. Just through this door is where the livery is kept, close to hand for dressing the horses ahead of accompanying carriages on journeys. I love this wood clad room with all the elaborate saddles and harness bits displayed in the cabinets. It looks like a lot of thought went into making sure that your horse was as well dressed as you. It was now getting quite busy, so my last stop of the day was to see the chemist and the photography studio, which is situated next door to the bakery. 
All the lotions and portions are piled up on display, with the ones in the window being advertised for toilet remedies. And I can imagine that there was a lot of those needed in the 1900s. An Edwardian chemist would have given out medical advice in medicine, often stuck in cure rolls stocked in jars behind the counter. Many people couldn't afford the doctor's bills, so often resorted to trying the chemist's concoctions in the hope of getting better. I think I'd like one of those cure recalls in a day remedies actually. As well as the medicine, the chemists sometimes stocked luxury toiletries, such as scented soaps and cold cream. I've even heard that sometimes they sold early versions of makeup under the counter, which is scandalous really. This chemist in Beamish didn't have any makeup unfortunately, but they did have huge bars of carbolic soap. This would have been used to create aerated water in flavours including sarsaparilla, blood tonic and cola, based on traditional recipes. This type of drink became really popular during the temperance movement for being non-alcoholic and the chemist often marketed them as being good for you, despite being able to access the chemicals to make fizzy waters. And here we have the photography studio where you can actually get your photo taken in the Edwardian style. I hope you liked this little look around the 1900s town at Beamish. Please like and subscribe if you'd like to see more from me and I'll see you soon.